Uh, okay, today's lesson is 12.3, surface area of pyramids and cones. Uh, so before, you found the surface area of the prisms and the cylinders, and today, what we're going to do now is we're going to find the surface area of pyramids and cones. So the goal that I want you to get by the end of listening to this lesson or watching this lesson is you're going to be able to find the surface area of pyramids and cones. I just want to remind you of a few things that during this video you need to take notes and uh, you're going to bring those notes with you. You can use the note taking guide that I provided for you or you can take notes on your own. Notes are not optional. You, you must take notes to get credit for this assignment. So remember, if you fail to bring these notes to class uh, on Friday, which is tomorrow, Five points will be deducted from your final project. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so what we're looking at is we're looking at pyramids is the first thing. So this here is an, uh, is an example of a pyramid. So let's just get the definition of what a pyramid is. So a pyramid is a polyhedron in which the base is a polygon and its lateral faces are triangles with a common vertex. So here is our polygon and this is a lateral face right here and you can see that the lateral face is a triangle. So the, the sides, the lateral faces are triangles. So the vertex of the pyramid is right up here at the top. So that's where all three of the triangles come together, and we call that the vertex of a pyramid. All right, so next thing uh, we're going to look at is the regular pyramid. So uh, if I have a regular pyramid, you know what regular means. Uh, it means that all of the, the sides are equal and all of the angles are equal on a polygon. So here I have a regular pyramid. So that just means that the base, this polygon at the bottom, is just a regular uh, polygon. And once again, it has the triangles for its sides. And you can see that it has the vertex also up here. And now what's important about this one is the slant height as well. That's what I want to talk about next is the slant height. So the slant height is on the lateral face right here. So there, that is the slant height of the pyramid. So Here's my slant height once again. Here is the height of the pyramid. They're two different things, slant height and height. And if you kind of look in here, can you see there is a right triangle in here? Here's our right triangle that is uh, established. All right, so let's just do an example. We are going to find the area of each lateral face. So that just means that I'm finding the area of this shaded region right here. So that's what I'm going to do. So I already told you that um, there is a right triangle in here. Here's our right triangle right over here. Um, and the height is 97. That is, this is a leg, you see that? And then here is half the base. So the whole base was 90, so half the base is 45, and this here is a leg as well. And then my slant height, and we note that with uh, an L. So my slant, light, my slant height is the hypotenuse. So this should look familiar to you, just because we've been using it for several chapters. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the formula that I'm going to use for this is actually l squared, because it's the hypotenuse, 
equals h squared plus one half the base squared. So this formula right here is the same as that. All right, so let's just go ahead and substitute our information in. So this is 97, because that is my height. And um, this here is 45. And that's, those are squared. Okay, let's get rid of that. Okay, so those are 97 squared and 45 squared. And then if I simplify that down more, I just square those and add them together. So I just square them and add them together. And now this here is L squared. So I'm just now going to take the square root of that. So when I take the square root, uh, that's what I come up with. And I'm only going to take the positive square roots uh, because I can't have a length that is negative. So therefore, this just simplifies down to 0.93. All right, so what I just found was this the slant height uh, is what I just, I just saw for was just that slant height right now. So now I need to find the area of the, the lateral face. So it's a triangle. It's a triangle, so therefore, I'm just going to go ahead and substitute the information in for a triangle. So the base was 90. The base was 90. And uh, my slant height was 106.93. So I'm just substituting uh, that in, and then I'm just going to simplify it. 4811.85. So therefore, the area of each lateral face is 4811.85. Uh, so here, uh, this is uh, my theorem for finding the surface area of the regular pyramid. So this is the whole thing. It's not, it's uh, adding up all of the sides and the base as well. So you can see here's my big B, all right, and we know capital B stands for the area of the base. So that's what my B is. So what I'm going to also uh, put in there is now I need one half P L. So P stands for perimeter, and L stands for the slant height. So once again, the surface area is equal to capital B plus one half P L. So that that this is the formula you need to write down and have. All right. So looking at our next example, I can see that my base is a hexagon. So this just takes you back to the last chapter. You need to find what A, N, and S is. Uh, so those are the important questions. So I can see the base is a hexagon here. Uh, here's the picture of it kind of broken away from the pyram uh, pyramid. Uh, so I can see A is 4 radical 3. The number of sides is 6, and the side length there is 8. So we just need to go ahead and solve for the area of that. So the perimeter is equal to 6 times 8. So I'm just solving, I solve for the perimeter, and now I'm just going to go ahead and solve there for the apothem, or not the apothem, but the area. So area equals one half, the apothem is four radical three, and then the perimeter is 48. And then um, once I multiply that out, I have 96 radical three. So I multiply all that out, and that's what I come up with. So let's just fill in the blanks here. It says, first find the area of the base using the formula uh, of a regular polygon. 
Uh, the apothem is 4 radical 3, that's what I had up above, and the perimeter is 6 times 8, which makes it 48. So this here is, um, so the area of the base B is one half the apothem, again, for radical three times 48, which, and I have this up above, is 96 radical three. So I have uh, all the information. So this here is capital B. So that's the area of the base. So and you can see my formula right here that I'm using. So now I'm just going to substitute everything in. So this is 90. Oh, I thought that was going to be that. So um, this here is, the big B is 96 radical 3 plus 1 half 48 times 18. Uh, so this simplifies to 96 radical 3 and that simplifies to 432. And then if I multiply this out, so I'm going to simplify the radical at the end. So 432 plus 96 times radical 3, uh, it's going to come up to 598.3. And we're going to say that this is just squared. Okay, so the surface area is 598.3 inches squared. All right, so next one. 